to invest or not to invest? That is the major question confronting the entrepreneur. Whether it is for a small project or a large project, investing is an important decision because of its financial implications. However, it is not just the money angle of investments. It's the technology to be adopted, the people to be hired and managed, the products to be designed and marketed, the marketing channels to be used, the suppliers to be tapped. All of this comprised the investing decision. Before investing, however, the entrepreneur should have gone through the process of opportunity seeking and opportunity screening. Investing is the ultimate expression of opportunity seizing. The entrepreneur should have likewise assessed what customer segment to target. The entrepreneur should have pinpointed the right location. He or she should have canvassed the prices of materials, supplies, machinery and equipment, furniture and fixtures, vehicles, and all other investment requirements. Operating costs and expenses should have been estimated and verified. Industry or market practices should have been checked in order to determine the best distribution strategies and the most attractive selling prices. In other words, what remains to be done is to put all of the elements of the investment together in a financial format that would allow the entrepreneur to fully assess the financial viability of the project. The financial format of investing is composed of three vital elements. The first element are the capital investments. It has three major parts. The first are the fixed assets or the plant, property, and equipment needed by the project. The second is the current assets or working capital. And the third is the capitalized organizational and pre-operating expenses. The second vital component is to determine the production volume and sales expected over the life of the project. The third vital component is to determine the production costs and operating expenses needed to produce the goods and services for sale. The last part is to determine the selling general and administrative expenses to support the overhead of the entire corporation. There's a fourth vital component in the financial format. And these are the financial requirements of the project and their attendant financing costs. However, it is advisable for the entrepreneur to separate the investment decision from the financing decision. The entrepreneur must first assess the intrinsic viability of the project without confusing it with the financing costs. For example, a good project with a high financing cost might look bad. And a bad project with very low financing cost might look good. Investments are long-term propositions. Usually, the entrepreneur is only able to recover his or her capital investment over several years. This is called the payback period. It is computed by determining the cash outlays for the capital investments and then counting the number of years it would take for the net cash inflows from the project to recoup the capital investment. Net cash inflows are derived by subtracting cash outflows or operating expenses from the cash inflows or cash collections from the sales made. Here's an example of a payback period computation. We can see that there was an outlay 
of 2 million pesos for the project. In the second year, there's a net cash outflow of 1 million, making the total outflow for those two years 3 million. Then in the third and fourth year, plus one fourth of the fifth year, we make a net cash inflow of 3 million, thus recovering the entire 3 million investment. Therefore, the payback period equals four and a half years. However, the entrepreneur knows fully well that one million received today is not the same as one million received five years later. If the entrepreneur received one million today and he or she were able to invest this money in a stock or a bond, yielding 10% a year, then the money would grow to 1.61 million in the fifth year. Thus, at 10% interest per annum, 1 million today, or the present value, would be equivalent to the future value of 1,610,000 pesos five years hence. Let's look at the numbers. There is therefore a time value of money. Depending on the yield expectations of the entrepreneur, the present value of money would have a future value equivalent to the present value of the money compounded over the future years of the expected value of return or investment yield. This can be converted into a formula. Future value equals the present value multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate or yield expectations raised to N or the number of years of the project's economic life. Again, FB is the future value. PB is the present value. I is the interest rate or the expected yield, and N is the number of years of the project life. The entrepreneur can compute the future value by using a financial calculator or a computer. However, for purposes of this lecture, we will provide you a table of compound factors. The column labeled period represents the number of years or months if the expected yield is on a monthly basis. The expected yields or rates of return are shown in the horizontal plane. The compound factors are presented in the intersections of the stipulated period of time and the expected investment yield or rate of return. An investment of 1 peso today would grow to 2.079 pesos in 15 years at 5% expected rate of return. While an investment of the same 1 peso at an expected yield of 15% over 15 years would be 8.137 pesos. To get the future value of any amount of money over a certain number of years at a particular investment yield, simply multiply that amount of money by the compound factor found in the intersection of the period, number of years, and the expected yield. For example, the future value in 10 years of 10 million pesos today, a 10% yield or rate of return, would be 25,940,000 pesos. Multiply the 10 million pesos by 1 plus 0.10 or 10% raised to the 10th power or 10 years, which Appendix 1 computes at 2.594.
it is possible for the entrepreneur to convert all expected future values into their present values by reversing the process. Rather than compounding, the entrepreneur would be discounting at the expected investment yield or rate of return. Mathematically, the discount factor is the reciprocal of the compound factor. The reciprocal is 1 divided by the same number. If 10 million today is equivalent to 25 million 940,000 pesos, 10 years from now at 10% yield or rate of return, then 25,940,000 can be discounted at the reciprocal of 1 plus 0 0.10 to the 10th power. This is 1 over 1.1 to the 10th power. The reciprocals of the compound factors are provided in Appendix 2, which is a table of discount factors. This allows the entrepreneur to discount any future value and bring it to the present value. Appendix 2 computes the discount factor at 0 0.386 for investment yielding 10% on the 10th year. This discount factor of 0 0.386 equals the reciprocal of 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the 10th power or 2.594. Compounding allows the entrepreneur to convert present values into future values. And discounting allows the entrepreneur to convert all future values into the present values. This is an important concept. However, any investment of the entrepreneur would yield different values over time. Thus, it is important for the entrepreneur to bring all of these different future values into a common denominator or today's value of money. This common denominator is the present value of that money. When an entrepreneur invests in a project, there's a capital outlay to be made. This is cash going out. But the entrepreneur expects some cash to come in in the form of revenues. Corresponding to these revenues, there are production costs and operating expenses. Again, cash going out. Hopefully, the cash coming in or revenues would exceed the cash going out or costs and expenses, resulting in a net cash inflow. If the entrepreneur can convert all of this present and future cash going out and cash coming in, then he could determine if the capital investment were worth it by converting them all into a present value, which is the value today. This conversion, of course, would be at a certain yield expectation or rate of return expectation. If the net present value were zero, the rate of return would be exactly 10%. If the net present value were greater than zero, then the return would be greater than 10%. If the net present value were less than zero, then it would be lower than 10%. To illustrate, let us examine the table presented. We can see an investment today of 1 million or cash going out of 1 million. This is a negative present value of 1 million pesos. In the next five years, there will be net cash inflows of 300,000 pesos a year. Then we discount that using the discount table and we get the present values for years 1 to 
to years five. Getting all the positive values from years one to year five and subtracting the negative value from the investment would yield us a net present value of 137,000 pesos. Since all the net cash inflows are the same number, or 300,000 pesos, then the computation of the present values of all the net cash inflows could be simplified. Simply add or accumulate the discount factors of years 1 to 5 and multiply the sum by 300,000 pesos. This accumulated discount factors at a certain investment yield or rate of return can be found in Appendix 3. Let us see how we can apply Appendix 3 to our previous example. Since the computation of the net present value in the example given is greater than zero, then the return to the project exceeds 10%. At some higher return than 10%, the net present value of the capital investment and the net cash inflows for the project would be exactly zero. This higher return which would compute the net present value at zero would be the internal rate of return of the project. Without a financial calculator or a computer, the investment analyst would have to do a trial and error process of computing the net present value at the higher interest rates. However, in the case of a project with the same net cash inflows every year, the computation would be simple. The investment analyst would be looking for an accumulated discount factor in year five that would make the 300,000 pesos multiplied by that accumulated discount factor equivalent to the capital investment outlay of 1 million pesos. That's easy to calculate. Simply divide 1 million pesos by 300,000 pesos to get the accumulated discount factor of 3.333. This number multiplied by 300,000 pesos equals 1 million pesos. A quick look at Appendix 3 in year 5 would reveal that 3.333 is between the investment yield expectation or rate of return of 14% and 16% which are computed at 3.433 and 3.274 respectively. Therefore, the internal rate of return would be approximately 15%. Great accuracy is not necessary because the projected cash flows are mere estimates and cannot be 100% accurate anyway. 